I'm Matt Shoemaker from the Live American History blog, and this is OER Week Day 3. OER Week is an attempt to push myself to share more of what I am doing in my classroom with other teachers so that we can improve our discipline and we can improve our practice together. If you have not watched days one and two, you can do that in the description below. You will see the links, and it is all on the blog at liveamericanhistory.blogspot.com. So today's topic is all about assessment, and I do not mean multiple choice assessment. I'm talking about authentic, real world, students have to know it, students have to prove it, assessment. It is stale, it is static, and it's not a real valid indicator of what students know. Uh, if students can guess based on wording, that is not proving that they know it. That is proving that they are skilled with interpreting things uh, and guessing. So you are testing something, just not necessarily your content. My biggest problem with traditional assessments, however, is the fact that people get so worked up about it. Kids get so nervous about assessments. It's instead of a day of celebration, which is how some teachers brand it, and that's great, and if that works for you, awesome. Uh, that's, that's not really going to convince me, myself. I'm still going to have that same grimace on my face when it's test day because I hate giving tests like that. The kids freeze up, and what they could tell me in the hallway in an informal conversation, they cannot tell me when I ask them to put it into a short answer form. So I do not think that most traditional assessments, as we are used to seeing them, are valid in a 21st century classroom. My district began the transition to a standards-based grading system uh, over the last couple years. And last year, I piloted SPG in my classroom. And one thing I really appreciated about it was the fact that I had to think very carefully about what I was giving students and what I was assessing students on. So when I threw out handfuls of assessments because they didn't really show me what students knew and they weren't good assessments, even though I had used them for multiple years, I started looking for things to replace them with. And one of the buzzwords that I kept hearing again and again was gamification. And so I looked into it a little bit and I bought this book. Shout out to Michael Matera, uh, who has written this book, Explore Like a Pirate. It's part of the Teach Like a Pirate uh, series uh, from, from Dave Burgess there that started that whole thing. And this is really a great book if you're interested in totally changing up the way that you approach learning in your classroom and approach assessing classroom management. So check it out and get that if you don't because it's well worth it. But if you just want to see what it's about before actually sinking the coinage on this one, uh, on Wednesday nights you can search the hashtag explore like a pirate XLAP and you can open your eyes to a whole new world of gamification. I was really into the gamification idea and I spent a lot of my summer trying to move my classes that direction so that I could go full on gamification in August. Uh, but I had the opportunity to participate in some awesome PD through Gilder Lehrman and uh, Monticello and Mount Vernon. So uh, nearly a month and a half of my summer was taking up uh, doing history nerd stuff. So when I came back, I did not go full implementation, but I did incorporate a lot of the principles of gamification into my room. One of those was gamifying assessments. give you an idea of how app smashing works in my classroom if you go to the resources page for day three on the live american history blog you will see a template that i made just a real simple quick template that you guys can take and make a copy of and alter to fit what you need 
So I have these grids here, and there are ones that are grayed out, and then there are ones that are shaped kind of like a sideways cross or a T on there. And what I have done is I have chosen a particular set of apps that I want the students to use. And I put them on this piece of paper. Once you cut away all of the gray pieces, you are left with a shape like this. If you fold all of those along the black lines, you will see that it comes into a cube or a die. I just mocked this one up real quick. And so what we see is a different app on each side. Now, mine in my classroom, I laminated before I put together, and then I taped the bejesus out of it in order to withstand the trauma of seventh grade boys. So I have several dice in my room, and when it comes time to assess, what we will do is I have the students take the dice and roll uh, three different times, or until they get three different apps. Now, you could choose one app, two apps, three apps, four apps. Uh, it, it's completely up to you. You could take two die and have them roll and have them choose one from each die. On this one, let's say they might get Flickr and Slides and YouTube. So what I would then do is give the students a rundown of the learning targets for our standard. And again, this is on the resources for day three. Students then have to use those apps that they rolled and create a product that addresses all three of our learning targets. If you go to the day three resources, I have provided links for you. One of the best that I found was over at Matt Miller's blog, Ditch That Textbook, where he has four different parts on how to get started and as we can see in his fourth part, taking it to the next level. This does require some front loading. The good thing is if you are a one-to-one -one classroom or you use Google Classroom or the Google Suite very often at all, your kids will already know how to use things like slides and docs. You can easily incorporate sites because sites has been redesigned and it's really easy to use for students now. You could bring in Sheets, you could bring in YouTube. If you do want them to use anything outside of the Google Suite, you will need to teach them how to do that before so they are not learning and then trying to complete the assessment. And if technology is something that you don't have a lot of in your district or in your building, like my building, then you will need to probably do a little more front loading before you just push kids off the deep end into this type of assessment. Thanks for joining me, and I hope that you will come back tomorrow for OER Weekday 4, where we will be talking about the greatest movie trilogy in all history and how to work backwards in history to help students think critically and to solve historical problems. So until then, 